flying down to, uh, to um, Omaha for the matches. And uh, it was the pilot and uh, uh, I think Nick was the co-pilot that night. And then we had Steve Olsonowski, myself, uh, Baron Von Raschke, uh, Mad Dog, Bobby Heenan, and Adrian Adonis on the plane. So, and Mad Dog liked to play cribbage and he'd sit there and he didn't talk much. You know, and he's a crazy son of a bitch. You know, and he, he's just sitting there and we're playing. And all of a sudden he goes, Greg, can you do me a favor? And I said, what do you want me to do? I am meeting my fiance tonight and her family. I want to wrestle early on the card so I can go meet them for dinner. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll talk to promoter Joe Dusick. So uh, we get to the arena. I told Joe, so they put him on the second match. And, and uh, I see Mad Dog over in, in the corner. Took something, drinks down a pint of whiskey. I said to Jim, what the shit's he doing over there? He, he said, well, I told, I gave him a pill. He was, he had to drive back to Quebec the next morning to pick up his son who was arrested. He had to go to jail if Mad Dog didn't take him with him. So Mad Dog told Jim he needed something to stay awake. He says, well, take this, but don't take it until tomorrow morning before you leave. It'll keep you up all night. So he popped it then and drinks the pint of whiskey. Into the ring he goes. He's not even gone two or three minutes. He comes back in. I said, what are you doing back here? I killed that kid. I killed him. <laughs> I got to go meet the family. Huh. So he gets the gets over and takes his clothes off. He's got a towel around him. His horse sits down by us. And Joe Dusick used to have a case of cold beer in one locker room and then in the other one. And he's drinking a beer. And we're sitting there talking. And he's had about three beers. And I said, hey, don't you have to go? see the family i'll go when i want to go <laughs> okay you know he was crazy to be around so he's there and he's drinking a few more beers and now there's an intermission and then we wrestle we wrestle about 45 minutes so we come back in to get a cold beer the beer's all gone i want shit so we go out to the go out to the to the plane and we get out there waiting and all of a sudden here comes here comes a cab up, and Steve Olsonowski gets out, and he, Mad Dog gets out like this. He's got a T-shirt on with barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> and I said, this, I said, Steve, what the shit happened? He said, well, you know, he took that pill that, that Jim gave him, and he, he drank some, he drank a pint of whiskey, and Adrian gave him some kind of a pill. And then we got to the, the restaurant, he's drinking wine, and they got in a cab and he wanted to stop and get a pint of whiskey. And he was getting so crazy. I gave him a joint to smoke. And then he got another whiskey and he drank that in the cab. She's got, he gets in the plane and now we won't let him sit. We got him in the back seat next to, to Adrian. And we take off and Mad Dog kept saying, oh, it's so peaceful out here. It's so peaceful. And all of a sudden we're playing cards and the whole plane goes boom, and we all duck. And it was you thought I thought another plane hit us and took the tail off. It was just a, and the, and the pilots yelling at us, close that door, close the door. <laughs> and we look around, and Mad Dog is hanging out the door, and all you can see is his shoulders and his head. And he goes, "It's so peaceful. I feel like flying tonight." <laughs> and the pilot says, "Grab him and get him in." We said. He's going to jump. We're not going with him. Let him go. And then he gets that, that look at him and he starts throwing everything that's not attached in the plane out. Wow. Garbage can, cans of beer, the beer case goes. He opens his wrestling bag, his wrestling boots go, the jock strap goes, all that. And then the bag goes. And then he leans back out and you can't see anything but his back. And he turns in and he goes, it's so peaceful. I feel like flying. So the pilot's telling us to get him in. We got to make an emergency landing. And he told us afterwards, it was the only plane built that had chains holding the stairs. Otherwise, any other plane had blown off, hit the tail, and we'd have gone right down. <laughs> so he tells us we got to make an emergency landing. So we're landing, I think, in Waterloo, Iowa. And we see fire engines, uh, ambulances, police cars, all, all the red lights going, and they're foaming the runway. 
everything you want to don't want to see when you want to see yeah <laughs> and he says okay guys you're gonna to have to prepare yourself get in the crash position i'm gonna put it down on one wheel but we might flip over Ooh. so he he pulls that thing in boom and we come to a stop <laughs> And here comes the fire engines and the police cars and Mad Dog's in the back. And we look back, and he's got foam all over him and he's peeling it off, takes a seatbelt off. He gets off the plane and he takes off across the runways. Now that they're holding two Ozark airlines from not leaving till we get, till they get us situated. And he's walking out towards those where they're going to release him. And the police said, Hey, go get that guy. And we said, you go get him. He's yeah. crazy. He's trying to be over the door at 6,000 feet, for Christ's sake. You know? So is that Mad Dog Michelle? Yeah, well, go get him. Go get him. So finally, <laughs> Steve and I ran out there. And just as we get there, he turns around and hits us with an open hand. And we hit him back. And about that time, this Ozark Airlines goes by. And it was so close, it blew us right over. Yeah. And we got up and we walked back. And he was still out there. <laughs> like that flailing around and the police went out and they were trying to handcuff him and they couldn't get his hands behind him and he says i'll kill you cocksuckers i'll kill you <laughs> so they finally get him back to the airplane he says okay you got two choices you can either take him back with you or we're going to lock him up and of course he turned to us and he was going to kill all of us if we didn't put him back in the plane so we put him behind the pilot and we put two straps on him <laughs> he, was, he was like this all the way back to Minneapolis. I'm going to kill you guys when I get out of here. I'm going to kill you. So we all jumped out of the plane and left the poor pilot in there with him. <laughs> they got him out. Oh. But